think it's been uh, uh, a great trip this far. Um, obviously, Chick Fil A Beach Bowl um, and, and Gary and everybody affiliated with the bowl um, does things first class, and, and uh, I think it's great for for uh, our guys, our players, um, to experience a bowl of this magnitude that they have not. Um, in, in there, you know, we've got fifth year seniors that have been to a couple bowl games, but nothing um, to this magnitude, nothing this. Um, you know, first class, and so it's, it's been uh, neat for them to, to be able to experience that maybe on, on their way out, and, and I think it's been also a, uh, a motivation for our, our young players to uh, uh, continue to win, because uh, uh, when, when you win a lot of games uh, at the University of Houston, really really cool things happen to you. So, uh, had a good week of practice, uh, the kids were flying around in the, in the Georgia Dome uh, the last couple of days, and, uh, but I think uh, as I'm sure Jimbo will attest, we're, we're all kind of ready to, to play a game. It's been a long time since, since we played a game. And, um, we are, are certainly uh, ready to play a game tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Coach Fisher, your comments on your experience so far this week? It, it, it has been a long experience. Like I said, any time you get with Gary Stowe and the Chick-fil-A, Beach Bowl, Chick-fil-A in general, it's always a first class experience. Everything I've ever been around, these folks have the player's interest and the participant's interest at heart, and it's truly servicing the folks that are in the game or whatever organization they're around. It's, it's a first-class organization. It's great. It's a true privilege and honor to be here at the Beach Bowl. And, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, special to me because my first bowl game as a coach my first year here, I was able to, to come to this game, and uh, it was a great experience then, too. But it's been very special for our players. The players have loved the city of Atlanta. They loved all that. The thing that they've had for them to do, they're excited again. They're excited to play too, I think so. And then you know, at the beginning of the week you have your fun, then you start dwindling down. But you know, it, it, we're ready to, I think, play a great Houston team. I think Houston's done a tremendous job, and we don't have to definitely play an A game to, to have success. They have done a tremendous uh, job of recruiting players and, and getting great athletes. They've done an unbelievable job of creating a culture there and, and, and getting them ready to play. But the thing I'm excited about for our players, it's our fourth consecutive either New Year's Day. Uh, six or playoff game or whatever. You know, your goal is always to be in the playoffs, if not to be one of the New Year's Six Day games. And our goal when we came to the uh, I became the head coach of Florida State was to create a program, not a team. And this is our fourth consecutive game, and our seniors have a chance to be out in a very special class. We've had a lot of guys go to the league, and I'm very proud of this team for one thing. The last couple of years, we've lost a lot of players in the NFL. Everyone said this year we had a young team, and our kids and our culture, I think, have allowed us to be very successful. We've had a lot of young guys step up. We've had a lot of fourth and fifth year seniors have really taken on leadership roles they never had to before. And you watch them grow, and it's fun because in our day and age now, it's three and done, three and done, or how quick can I get in the NFL? Those fourth and fifth year guys make a huge impact in your program when you're able to have them. And just watching some of those guys in our program emerge as, as really great players, have a chance to go to the league. But, but, but just their leadership and the roles in which they had to accept this year, a lot of guys that no one ever thought would have to take those roles. It's been a fun team to coach. I love being around them. They work hard. Uh, again, I know they're looking forward to playing in the game. And how they represent our university is what I'm extremely proud of. And uh, very proud of what they've established here in the as a program for Florida State. Thank you, Coach. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. All right, who's going to lead us off? All right, we'll go right here in the second row. Brian Smith, Houston Chronicle. Tom, you, going into this game, you spoke about uh, the exposure that you can't buy this type of advertisement. You've had it this week and for this last one, but what, what could a win do for this program? Jim was talking about not just a team, but a program. And, Look at Boise State, what it did for them not too long ago, Central Florida against Baylor. I mean, what, what, what would a win like this do for the program long term? Well, I, I think, you know, as I've said before, in, anytime you play uh, in a bowl game or, or any, um, any season, really, you, you want to win your last game. Um, and uh, uh, it certainly carries momentum uh, into the offseason for the following year. And, um, but I don't, I don't think that. Uh, I, I, I think win, lose, or draw, we've established our validity um, uh, in, in college football and, and that, uh, that we belong and that the American Athletic Conference is, uh, you know, if you, if you win the American Athletic Conference, you're going to go to a uh, New Year's Six Bowl game. And so um, I, don't, I don't know that a win um, does anything for us on a national level. I've, I've had people ask me about preseason rankings and all that, and I'm just I'm trying to play a game and, and sign a recruiting class and put one step in front of the other. But I, I, I could care less really about preseason rankings at this point. But um, uh, I know, like, like Coach Fisher said, and, and, and you repeat, 
undefeated. You know, we're, we're uh, we got here. We, we set out not to just build a build a team, but a, but a program and a culture, and, and uh, uh, we're well on our way to do, to doing that. And, and winning the game will, will help just with momentum in the off season. David Junior, ABC 13, Houston. Chippa, when you watch the film with UVA University of Houston, well, what jumps out of you? Overall athleticism and how well and how tough and how disciplined they are when they play. I mean, you know, when everybody talks about the Power Five, and, you know, we were in the ACC, and, and, and we went through it a couple years ago for the we won the National Championship. You're in the ACC, but you're playing an SEC school. Well, you can't play. Well, wait a minute. You can. Good players can go anywhere. Everybody's got good players. There's so many great players out there in this country playing at all different levels of ball. Different, you know, different schools, whatever it is. This is a very athletic team. It's a big team. Uh, they're extremely well coached, and disciplined on all three sides. They cause you problems in all three phases, and they're a great football team. And they're very well deserved to be here. And again, I, we're going to have to play our tails off to have success in the game. Something fast and fresh. Well, you know, talk about the young players stepping into roles this season. You know, how much will it win and help you guys spring, spring forward into the spring? And, and for your experience next year? Well, again, like Tom said, I mean, it, it's not the ultimate thing that makes next year, you know, a great year. It does provide a lot of confidence. It makes you feel good about yourself. It sends the seniors out the right way, which, which they want to be able to do that. And you want to celebrate them with the win and the young guys understanding the culture and how to play in these big moments and these big games. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's how you play. We want to play well. That's the key. We want to play well. If the results come out that way, then the results come out that way. But how they handle the moment, to me, the more time you get in these environments and atmospheres and neutral site games, but if you get those playoff games and these big games, you're not going to play with your home state. You're getting used to all the, as I say, hoopla that goes with these games and being able to accept that, make that a new home. And I think that's very important. And then being able to take that to the field and play extremely well. So the process of what you do and how you do things, the kids can handle that. But, you know, it's always great to finish the season on the win. That's definitely what we want to do. Okay, up here, Steve. Uh, Steve Hummer with the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, Coach Herman, uh, on the culture building front, when you first arrived there, uh, uh, story about locking up the locker room and making them earn their way back in. What, what prompted that? And what do you think the, the effects were of that? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting as you, when you take over a program, uh, you know, you, you jump head first into recruiting, and uh, we were on Christmas break, and then, and then the NCAA said, okay, you're, you're in contact period, so we're, and so now we're on the road. I, I got to know our signing class well before I knew our own players. I was getting introduced to our players at recruiting dinners at, on Friday nights and Saturday nights as they were hosting recruits, and so um, I had, had to rely on information I was receiving back from uh, from our strength coach and from our director of football operations and really what was getting back to me was not I mean we, we, we weren't um, you know nothing really egregious but I, I think there was uh, there was this um, uh, sense that it, it was okay to show up 30 seconds late to, to a team lift or it was okay to miss a class or it was okay to set a tutor appointment and say oh shucks I forgot and um, and we needed to establish very early that uh, that, that that's not okay and that the, that the little things matter. So um, when we got off the road that very first Monday, we uh, put, put giant chains on the on the locker room doors and padlocked them up and said we'll see you at 4:30 in the morning on uh, on the turf field and uh, you can wear you know your junior high grade. You know we had kids in their junior high grade cut off you know t-shirts and all that stuff and it was nothing but uh, you know can we do as many up downs uh, right as, as, as we can and so I, I think when you ask what what was the outcome uh, I, I think the outcome was one um, we found out uh, who the quitters were uh, we found out the guys that weren't very mentally tough and uh, it's much better to find that out in February, March than it is in October on fourth down against Memphis, I can tell you that. Um, so we found that out very early, but we also found out who the leaders were and, uh, and who the, the tough guys were, who the guys that were, were mentally um, strong and, and could survive um, that kind of atmosphere. And then uh, I, I think you know, probably the biggest thing was that we established very early that you know we're going to do things right and that uh, there are 18 to 22 year old kids and they're going to, as we call it, they're going to test the perimeter every now and again and uh, they, they need to know that, that that 
electric shock fence is, is on 24 7 it doesn't take any days off i can tell you that Go right here on the third row on the, on the aisle, please. Jimbo, you touched on this. Mark Berman from Fox used to be touching this song. What have you thought about that's it? That's, that's it, Jimbo. Oh, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a legend. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already got a pre report on you. I could ask Jimbo if it's going to be a girl like you, Tom. I'll back up on that. What have you thought about what Tom and his staff have done in such a short amount of time? You know, what's amazing to me, not only creating culture and winning it a high, you win games, but to consistently do it, I think it's very hard to implement in the first year. And for kids to carry out that grind of what you truly expect and what he's been able to do has been remarkable. Another thing is the amount of offense and defense in which they run within the first year of the program. I think that shows their ability to teach and get kids to come, get to buy into what they're doing and all the things that are going on. And uh, I just think it's, it's amazing for me to go with 12 and 1 and win a conference championship, do all the things they've done. It's one heck of a coaching job, there's no doubt. I know how tough that is, and it, it, it's, it's tremendous what he's done. All right, next question. All right, let's go here on the aisle. Brendan Joseph, 6 head fan, Coach Fisher. Sean McGuire wasn't your quarterback to start the season. He was entrenched in the three way battle in spring practice. Talk about your confidence in him and how it's grown over the years. Well, I think what Sean has shown is a great, a great deal of maturity, how he handles each situation. And I think it shows his inner confidence in himself. I think, you know, for a guy who caused an arm roll today when he gets the gratification of the kid, as soon as they fail, the first thing they want to do, they want to transfer, they want to go here, they want to go there, they want to get somebody else. Sean said, Coach, what do I need to do better? How do I need to fit in the role? What do I, what do I have to do for our team? And I think our team really responds to him because of that and appreciates how committed he is to them. And then he got better at things. He relaxed and, and was able to make plays. He got better and better. And that means one heck of a player for us. And I think he's got a great future for us. I mean, it's just a commitment to me of his character and his class. And I think that's, I don't say it's lacking, but it's great to see in young guys today because of the instant gratification syndrome I think we're in now in society in general, not just kids, but in society in general. And it doesn't go your way. I want to go here. I want to go there. I think it's just a great testament to who he is as a human being. Okay, back here in room two, please. Frank Smith is Chronicles. Tom, the Louisville game, the Memphis game, it was tight. Memphis, you guys were down 20-21 in the fourth quarter. If you guys get down in this game, how, how important is uh, the culture that you built all year and, and containing your, your emotions in such a big game, you know, to, to mentally stay in this? You guys have proven this year that this will obviously be a, an entirely different stage against probably the toughest, obviously the toughest, toughest opponent you played this year. We, uh, we trained for that um, from, from January and as part of the um, you know, kind of culture building process and, and locking the locker room doors and all that. And, uh, I, I think it was said very uh, eloquently yesterday at the, the FCA breakfast that um, when you're, you're faced with challenges, uh, human nature is to react. And reacting is a, is a primal, it's, a, it's a, uh, a human nature thing to do. And, and, Reacting is really bad because um, reacting uh, means you're, you, you shut your mind off and you go back to uh, human nature and we're all flawed creatures and you, 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 uh, um, the human nature says we're going to panic um, or we're going to give up or we're going to take the easy way out. Um, and so uh, as was said in the uh, FCA breakfast again yesterday, uh, when faced with challenges, we train our guys how to respond rather than react. And the word respond implies that you're mindful, that, you're, that there's thoughts involved in that, and that you revert back to uh, the way that you're trained, and you revert back to the, um, the reasons that you, that you play and, and the love that you have, <clears throat> excuse me, for the guy next to you. So um, long story short, I think those games uh, will help us uh, should that situation arise, but I, I think overall, just the way that, that we train, um, for the daily and, and really snap by snap challenges that, that we're faced every single every single day and every single game is it, really more to do with, with us being able to overcome some of that adversity. Okay, over here on the left. Irish Show about WarChant.com. Jimbo, listening to Coach Herman talk about changing the culture and what he's done in his first year, does it kind of take you back six years ago? No doubt. I mean, you have to. You have to put of, of what you think and how you want your players, like you said, to respond to adversity, be able to make choices when things in critical moments, to be able to think and process information, not get emotional on things, and, and, and know what's what the thing that is right to do. And it's all a process, and it is. And I'm gonna tell you, 
It's a continual process because as we have faced it now, because of success, sometimes you know you say when you fail, you see character. I think when you have success, you reveal a lot of character also. I mean, are you willing to still go do the little things that matter in program? Or are you willing to allow, well, I've got that to take shortcuts? I mean, I think, and I think as you'll, as you'll see in time, as he's having success, there'll be a different set of challenges that come. I don't think you ever stop teaching culture. I don't think you ever stop teaching because I think it evolves. I think you're constantly looking for change. People change. Kids change. I mean, I don't think you're coaching the same kids you did five to ten years ago. I mean, the, the, the way things are done, the way things happen. But it does take you back because it's important that you put your stamp. And I say, for lack of a better word, your personality or what you truly believe is important to have success with these kids and the process that it takes to get to the results. And not get so resolved. Don't get caught up in worrying about results, but the process of doing things right every day and creating great habits. Because when pressure comes, your habits will come straight to the surface. And what you train it, you don't win it because you work it, you win because you train it. And I, I think that, and I listened to him talk, it sounded to me, it is like deja vu, and I think, but it's a continual process, and it's things that I have to continue to do now because of some success we've had. It's still that same culture that you have to teach of why, and remember, and remind these guys why you've been able to have success when he does, when he's done a triple job. All right, here in the center back. Allison Cozy, WTXL, Jimbo, you talked about how that 2010 one here kind of propelled this team and propelled this program, but for you as a coach, just what does that do for a coach's confidence to come in and win a big bowl game? Well, again, because it, it's a environment that is different that you don't I mean you fight you, you go on you know you go in somebody else's house and, and play at their field you go in your own but to go to neutral site games and handle a week full of uh, events things you know and, and they can become great things if you know how to handle them, or they can become distractions and clutter you can get caught up in those things and i think when you're building a program that wants to play at the highest levels those are things that you have to get used to handling and dealing with and to get your players to understand when it's time to enjoy themselves, when it's time to go to work. And I think compartmentalizing, you know what I'm saying? I think it's the first time, you know, this is how I think we should do it. This is how I think it should happen. And all of a sudden then you have success and what you put in place for your kids to have success in your, in your, in your school. When they do that, it just reinforces that you're doing the right things. And it does, it builds your confidence, but it also reinforces that the process part of everything you're doing is right. Okay, back here. Uh, Jimbo, your senior class, especially the fifth year guys, uh, really the last group that you have that had to buy in and get your score, the championships and the winning streaks and all that. How important was it to get them on board and lay that foundation? It, it was extremely critical because at the end of the day, you know, coaches can only be with you and they win the first time so much. That's what you, and that's what's amazing, I think, about what he's done. I mean, you know the limited amount of hours that he's been able to score in a year that you only can deal with his players. You can't deal with them like you really need to be, especially that first year or two when you're trying to do that. And to getting a certain group of your peer groups, your leadership groups, to buy into what you're doing and reinforce all the things you're saying throughout. Those guys are those are the mouthpiece. Those are the guys that really get it done as much as the coaches do because they're the ones who are with the guys in the moments when they're off the field or in practice and hearing things said or done or what the guys are thinking. When the coach doesn't know, they're not going to tell you. But when that peer group and that, and that senior leadership group, or even, I'll say senior, but sometimes it's juniors, whatever it may be, freshmen, I don't think there's an age on no leadership. I, I haven't seen that in the dictionary yet, or there's an age on But, you know, getting those guys to buy into what you're doing and reinforcing all the key components, that is extremely critical in getting that in any team. That's what I think even more amazing about what Tom's done to one year. Right, Asher? Asher, well, I mean, to be coach, 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 last year, every game you guys went into, you had targets on your back, being the defending champions. How did a season like that last year help you prepare for a team like Houston that has said all week they had a giant chip on their shoulder with the ranking and coming into this game? Well, I mean, you know, here, here's at the end of the day. People say you got a target on your back or you're the favorite or whatever. At the end of the day, you got to perform. At the end of the day, when you get down to it, well, am I the favorite, am I the underdog, whatever, at the end of the day, you got to perform. And I think that's where I think you have to get your kids to understand. And what we have to understand is it's not about whether you're the favorite, whether you're the underdog, whatever it may be. It's about how are you going to perform at that Each game starts. If you're the favorite, they don't give you those seven points or eight points. I wish they would. They put them up on the board if you're the favorite. If you're the underdog, you know, you don't want. But at the end of the day, it's zero, zero. It's about performing every day and taking out. Because you just think about something. Tell these kids what they got. You only get 12 of these guaranteed a year. You only get 48 in your career. Why would you not be able to play a game? Why would you not look forward to the opportunity to work so hard year round and go perform in one of those games? And that's kind of how we look at it. No matter who we play, whether we're the favorite, whether we're the underdog, this is a chance for you to perform 
and, and represent the people who have sacrificed to get you here. Then he's talking about love is the reason for the fight with your teammates, but also the people that have sacrificed for all these kids, the family member, the mom that worked two jobs, the dad that worked two jobs, the grandma who raised them, the aunt, the uncle, whoever it may be. It's your job to represent your name and the people who have sacrificed to give you this opportunity for better than life to do it. So perform and do your best. And at the end of the day, if you do that, put your head on the pillow and go to sleep. Coach, are you actually unveiling a proposal here to give the higher ranked team a, a, an advantage on the scoreboard? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't remember when we said, uh, saying all week we had a chip on, a giant chip on our shoulder. I don't, I don't remember saying that. So. <laughs> That's it. That was interesting. All right, here we go right here in row three. Austin Lyon, right out Sports Network. Coach Fisher, you referenced that with some of the guys who won the NFL the last couple of years, the outside expectations weren't as high for this year's group. I'm wondering if this year's team has reached or exceeded your expectations for them. Well, our goal is every year is to be a national champion. I mean, our goals don't change matter what the outside representation says or, or says we should do. But here's what I said. I, I like this team. I said this team was a person I would hang out with. It. <laughs> because each team takes its own personality. Each team is like a child. It's like a kid. It takes its own personality, develops its own way to learn, its own way to work, its own way to do things. And I respect how they go about their business. Well, and, and, and is there frustrating times? Are you mad at the times? Yes. But you respect that their intent is never bad. And whenever, the harder we push them, the young guys can be frustrated. You say, you want to do this, you want to do that. And all of a sudden, they, you know, when you're pushing them, but you know what? They always say, Coach, what I mean, okay, Coach, let me do it again. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. And I like the personality of this team. And that's what I like so much about them. And, and, and if they reach their expectations, yes, because they can be the best they can be, because they played as hard as they can play, and they represent themselves very well. So, yes, I am very pleased about where they were achieved. All right, we're going to get to work on that. <laughs> Brandon Jones, the 6 8 fan, Coach Herman. Six months ago, you were just Tom Herman, the coach of Houston. Houston. Fast forward to early December, your name is the most talked about being probably in the metro Atlanta area for, for a given time, but nationally also. How has that changed you, if at all? Has it changed you being part of that process? Uh, not much. I, I, I think it's just a, a, a compliment to the way that we go about our business and, and um, you know, the great people that, that we have at the University of Houston. And, uh, you know what what we've been able to to establish in, in the team and the players so um, Hasn't changed me at all to, uh, That answer to the questions I can take that about things that are irrelevant to uh, Our day-to-day -day process at the University of Houston, but um, other than that the, it's uh, it's been business as usual Right here. I'm uh, Randy McAvoy, KPRC, NBC, in Houston. Uh, Tom, a question for you. Talk about the addition when you built your staff here carefully, uh, putting it together. The addition of Major Applewhite, what he's meant to you on the staff, and specifically how he's helped more grow as a quarterback. What have you seen over the last 10 months? Yeah, we, we uh, you know, one, one thing I, I, I know that we did right when, when we got. Um, when we got the job is we hired a great staff, uh, the best staff in the country, if you ask me. And, and uh, big part of that was, was Major. And, um, uh, you know, me and Major go way back. I was a graduate assistant coach at Texas when, when he was playing. And, uh, we, we've uh, kept in touch uh, throughout the years. And, and I've seen his career grow as, as he's seen mine. And so um, what, what he brought was exactly what I needed. I needed a guy that was humble. That a guy that uh, could come in and say, "Teach me your offense. Teach me your way of doing things," and then I would go teach it to the staff, and then I would go teach it to the players, and I will enhance it in any way that I can. But when you're off doing your first-year head coach things, that uh, you can trust me that the offense will head in the direction uh, that you want it to head, and that's. That's tough for a lot of guys, especially with as many pelts on the wall as Major has, uh, to come in and be that humble. A lot of guys want to come in and say, this is my offense, this is the way I do it, this is the way, um, you know, I've always done it. That's one of the worst phrases in coaching, by the way, is, well, it's, we do it that way because we've always done it that way. Um, but he was he was humble enough to say, I want to learn this, and then I want to go teach it. And, uh, and then what he's done uh, with Greg is he's, uh, He's developed a relationship, and that's, that's the biggest thing, I think, is uh, um, he's, he's dived into his life and, and uh, 
You know, he knows everything about him and uh, on a personal level, and uh, he has allowed Greg to to open up and, and trust him. And uh, I think when when players, especially guys like Greg, um, Greg's a pleaser. Greg wants it to remain, and I think a lot of times when you, you combine pleaser with competitor, um, a lot of times you, a that combination can be great. But a lot of times it, it causes a, a kid to tense up and, and, and um, uh, maybe play very tight. And I, and I think um, I saw that uh, at times with Greg because he wants to do so well uh, that uh, he puts a lot of pressure on himself. And I think uh, the only way to combat that uh, in a young man is to is trust. And uh, the, the trust of his position coach, the trust of his head coach, and ultimately the trust of his teammates. And I think Greg has done a great job of, of earning that. Uh, and uh, uh, Major's done a great job of reciprocating it, too. Okay, I'm here for Steve. Well, I was going to ask about Greg, so I won't do that. But what, what exactly is the size of the chip on your shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is, uh, is there any, any of that attitude that you're trying to play off this week? No, I, I think. Um, <laughs> We're the underdog for a reason. I mean, let's, let's, let's be honest. Um, you know, I, the, the last time I checked, we, uh, we don't have Jalen Ramsey on our team, and we don't have Alan Cook on our team, and we, we don't have uh, four and five star recruits on our team. We don't have first round uh, NFL draft picks on our team. So why, why, why would we think that uh, we, we shouldn't be the underdog? We should be the underdog. And uh, uh, we embrace that, and that's, that's okay. Um, I, I think these guys um, have grown up kind of being, being the underdog. They've, they've grown up, we're playing with two safeties back there that, uh, you know, they, they got to they check uh, the, the line at the roller coaster to see if they can get on, you know. And we're, we're playing with, uh, we're, we're playing with a, a, a tailback that, that can, you know, maybe break 4 9 and 40 on a, on a good day, and Kenneth Farrow. And, you know, we're playing with a quarterback that's five foot ten, one hundred and seventy-two pounds, and uh, that was a receiver for his first two years in college. And so, um, <clears throat> I think these guys are all—they're they're used to that. That's how they grew up. That's how they, they live their life, uh, and, and it's probably why they've achieved the amount of success they have because they—they felt a, maybe a, a bit uh, underappreciated or underrecruited or undervalued, and um, and if that motivates them, that's great. But. Um, there's no reason to think we're being uh, disrespected or we should have a chip on our shoulder because we um, we are who we are. Steve, if you could come up with a scale for us on chip yeah. size, we can that would be great. Job All right, let's go right over here. Brad Simon, Independent. Coach to both coaches, we've heard throughout the week that the theme of all week has been the last summer, visiting the Children's Hospital, Martin Luther King Jr. historical site, and the car racing in the barber shop. How has this experience been a special and unique reward for your players after two great seasons? Well, I, I think, like I said, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's something our older guys have never experienced. And so it's a, a really a neat reward because we, we, we preach to our guys ever since we got there that, um, you know, in life, when you, when, you, when you win and you succeed and you're the, you're the best at what you do, um, really cool things happen to you, and um, uh, and those things are, are worth fighting for. And whether those are tangible or intangible, uh, you know, we talk about if you if you want if your goal is to be a school teacher, go be the best school teacher in America. If your goal is to be the, the, in the Peace Corps, go be the best Peace Corps um, you know volunteer <coughs> there, there is. And so um, you know, with with winning comes reward, and I, I think it's a it's a great. Um, testimony to the way that we kind of run our, our operation on a day-to-day -day basis that, the, that there are tangible and intangible rewards um, for winning and doing your best and competing. And there are un unfortunately, well not, not unfortunately, actually fortunately, uh, that we're still this way in society, that there are tangible and intangible um, consequences for failure. And um, it, again, it, I think it's a, a great motivation for the young guys too to, to see, whoa, you know, this is this pretty big deal, and uh, I kind of like this. So let's let's work uh, even harder next year to get, to get back to a goal like this. 
Commissioner? And I think for our kids, again, it's another city that some guys have never been to and don't come around. I think it's also important to embrace the culture of that place and what it has, it has to give. And every part of the world you can learn something from. And I think, you know, going to Martin Luther King, going to church and realizing that, you know, a lot of the freedoms and a lot of the abilities that probably our kids have today, there's a lot of people who sacrificed and even gave their life for them to have the opportunities they have today. And I think it's very important for them to comprehend that, understand that. Uh, in your history, whether it's, you now I, I, I'm a big historian of the game of football, I appreciate the guys and the way these things evolve for the time. And also, you're talking about life, you're talking about changing the world with Martin Luther King and all the opportunities our African American kids have today. And because of people like him, maybe he, he had probably the most influence of anybody out there ever, and the opportunities he gave them. But then also, when you go into the Children's Hospital, understand that as an athlete and a successful athlete, like Tom said, there's a lot of rewarding things that go with it, there's also a lot of responsibility. And how much you can change people's lives, it has nothing to do with what's going on on the field. That you give a little bit of your individual time to brighten some young man's day or young lady's day who is suffering or has a life threatening disease and just walking in the room. And I think our guys, when they first went in, I think they were, they were a little bit scared. How do I do this? How, I, I don't know. I, they don't want to make a mistake. And when those kids kind of really taught them, they walked in and their eyes lit up and they saw them and they were able to communicate. And then I think there's so many other facets as a human being. I think we talk about athletics so much about the athlete, but the athlete really grows on the field when he grows off the field. As a human being, and understanding the importance of education, and understanding the importance of what he does on the field because God is blessing him, and how many blessings he can give to other folks by how he interacts with him, the way he carries himself, the way he represents himself. I think that is such a, the more time you can put our kids or in, in, in those situations to understand that there is more to this world than ball. And what, but what ball can teach you and what ball can present to other folks as a gift. And I think it was just it was a great experience from what Gary and the staff have done here to expose our kids to all these different things.